Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, folks. Dan Thompson here. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. We have a great show lined up. We'll have Dr. Jan Shear from Iowa State University join us to talk about dairy cow lameness. It proves to be a great show. I'm glad that you joined us. Stay tuned. We're cow-calf producers from Northeast Colorado. We run about 300 commercial cows and calves and uh, sell them at the sale barn in October. Since we've been given multi-min, our reproduction rate is about 95%, which is pretty good for grassland, and we run bulls, and we do not AI. That means an extra 15 calves at sale time. We've been using the multi-min product for three years. We are really happy with it and recommend it to anybody in this business. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normos in LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Jan, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Folks, this is Dr. Jan Shear, and, and Dr. Shear is a professor and extension specialist for uh, uh, the Iowa State College of Veterinary Medicine, and it's a treat to have him on the show. He's known internationally for dairy cow lameness and, and veterinary medicine, and and just thank you very much for taking time out to be with us. It's an, it's an honor. So let's let's start out with dairy cow lameness, and and what are some of the things that when you're sitting here first, you know, you know, how do we define the problem? Lameness is uh, basically anything that affects the mobility uh, of an animal. It's uh, normally defined as uh, uh, any kind of a condition that will cause uh, an abnormal gait, usually defined as an animal that is uh, lame in one or more uh, limbs. And um, that's the predominant way that we um, see um, the problem in, in most of our herd situations. Okay, and and it's it's one of those things in a in a dairy situation that's, you know, mastitis, scouring calves, lameness. I mean, it's a, it's a very, um, you know, it's pretty prevalent. Yeah, or from can a be. very prevalent disease, and uh, at least uh, some of the work that's been done uh, defines uh, uh, prevalence rates of somewhere between twenty and twenty five percent of all animals uh, in dairies uh, today uh, on average. Uh, and so the problem, and when we look at incidence, for example, incidence can be as high as 30 to 50% in some herds. Now, obviously there's herds that do a lot better, but lameness is uh, certainly one of the most costly conditions, uh, clinical conditions that we see in dairy cattle uh, by far. And also um, uh, one of the most important from a welfare standpoint as well. You bet. You bet. Well, what are some of the, the uh, and, and you know, we don't have any specific order that we have to go through this. It's just uh, some of the things that, that we generally talk about, but what are some of the clinical signs that, I mean, I, I, we obviously know the limp and cow, but what are some of the more milder or, or less obvious signs? Yeah, that's, that's important because those are the kinds of con, uh, behavioral things that we look for. Uh, in animals that are showing maybe subclinical uh, forms of this condition. Uh, catalyst prey animals naturally will hide their discomfort and so as a consequence of that uh, we look for other subtle signs, more subtle signs uh, of lameness to really uh, identify it. One can be uh, arching of the back, one can be bobbing of the head when they put down the, uh, the painful limb. Uh, we can also see postural uh, changes and when looking at cattle from the rear. Uh, so there are a number of other behavioral uh, things that we look at in terms of uh, lameness that can kind of give us an indication of when this is occurring at a, you know, at a subclinical or early stage. You bet. Well, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk with more with Dr. Shear about lameness and dairy cattle. I've always had an interest in care for the animals and their well-being. 
really what we want to do is work hard to eliminate as much feedlot lameness or beef cattle lameness as possible. How we feed a cow on a daily basis can not only have daily effects, but they can also have long-term effects on claw health, uh, reproductive performance, uh, mammary health, all of those factors as we look at, at the inputs and the response that the animal has to what we feed them. When animals have adequate intake of effective nutrients, we take care of the immune system and performance follows. It's important that the consumers understand our dedication to the well-being of these animals. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. You know just how costly BRD can be, but did you know that bacteria like Mannheimia and Pasteurella can cause BRD? That's why veterinarians and cattle raisers focus on preventing pasteurlosis with a quality vaccine like Pulmogard PHM-1. It's ready to use, highly syringable, and provides comprehensive protection with a single dose. For pasteurlosis protection that's truly the head of the class, ask your veterinarian about Pulmogard PHM-1. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a power stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Jan Shear and Dr. Shear is a professor at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Iowa State University, which is my alma mater. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, he's also extension, has an extension position there. And uh, Jan, thanks a million for, for being here and spend some time talking about a very important topic. My pleasure, for sure. So let's talk about some of the, what are some of the main causes of lameness that you see in dairies? I think you can break them down into roughly uh, three different categories. One would be, um, individual uh, lameness that causes, uh, that affects the individual digit or claw, as we might uh, refer to it. Uh, we also have infectious uh, disorders, the foot skin. And then there are a number of disorders that are associated with uh, problems that are above the hoof or what we might refer to as upper leg uh, lameness conditions. Okay, and so, you know, kind of, Talk me through, give me some examples of, of what we're going to see within those categories. Some of the things that, you know, foot rot, uh, laminitis. Well, 90% of lameness that occurs in cattle occurs uh, in the foot. Most of that, 90% of it, in fact, uh, occurs in rear feet. And somewhere in that 70 90% affects the outer claw of rear feet. And the most that gets it narrowed down pretty down. quick, doesn't it? And that's particularly true for cattle that are housed on, on concrete or hard surfaces. Uh, of course, it's a very unnatural surface for, for cows, and so um, you know, they're certainly designed much better for earthen surfaces. So 
um, that's a part of our problem. And the kinds of conditions we would see as far as claw disorders or indis individual disorders of the digit would be uh, ulcers, white line disease, and of course there's always things that can cause traumatic lesions of the soul. That might be stepping on a nail or it might be stepping on a stone or something like that. So those constitute the majority of the kinds of conditions that we see uh, that affect individual claws. And then we also have in our large dairy systems today uh, some problems with excessive wear of claws that uh, creates uh, for us also some ulcer problems in claws. And that's become and is becoming a bigger and bigger uh, issue for a lot of our dairies. Sure, sure. So then when we move to, to some of these more infectious mm -hmm. types, what, what are some of the things that you're seeing as in infectious types of lameness? Again, I think we look at the environment of the dairy cow, it's um, because of the fact that uh, we have them in confinement situations. We're looking at uh, conditions like digital dermatitis, foot rot, uh, interdigital dermatitis, and erosion of claw horn. And those are very important conditions as well, and true infectious uh, disorders of the foot skin. Okay, and so, so then we, we spend some time with the crews we're, we're coming up on our break here but um, you know some of the things as far as treatment and prevention obviously the prevention is the key uh, prevention is the key uh, there are uh, a number of things that we can do uh, first of all make sure that our facilities are designed right flooring is uh, surfaced correctly make sure that we've got a comfortable place for cows to lie down manage our rations so that we avoid uh, problems with rumen acidosis uh, and laminitis. Yep. And uh, I, th so. I think I think that, that we'll continue on with those and as we come back in the break maybe dig down a little bit deeper. Great. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back in a minute. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. And by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. It takes vision, dedication, hard work. It takes knowing who you can trust. At Zinpro Corporation, we have more industry endorsed research behind our trace minerals than any other company. Proof that our patented performance minerals help improve overall animal health and performance. Lots of companies make claims. At Zinpro, we generate results. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here. 
with Dr. Jan Shearer, who is a professor at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Iowa State University, and he's also extension veterinarian. And, and Jan, we're talking about lameness in dairy cattle and infectious disorders of the foot skin. Sounds very technical. <laughs> yeah. What are we talking about with this? Yeah, we're talking about predominantly foot rot and uh, hairy heel warts, right? Okay. Foot rot is a very important condition in uh, both beef and dairy cattle. It uh, is a condition that starts usually with a lesion in the interdigital skin or a cut in the interdigital skin that secondarily becomes infected. We get tremendous swelling of the foot. And uh, it's, it sometimes can have some very uh, bad secondary complications such as uh, involvement of, of a joint in one of the uh, uh, digits and that, that can be, lead to some really uh, uh, chronic con consequences. Yeah, the digital dermatitis or hairy heel warts is its uh, the more common name, the more uh, the name that most people would know it by, um, is really a serious problem in the dairy industry. Um, we've struggled for many years. It's been around since 1975, maybe a little earlier, uh, and we continue to try to uh, uh, manage this thing predominantly with um, uh, foot baths and with uh, topical medications and so forth, but it's a, it's a really tough one to manage. And uh, unfortunately, in recent time, we're starting to see this become a very significant problem in feed yards where it's even more difficult to apply those same kinds of uh, treatment approaches. Uh, it's just not convenient to, to manage it that way. And so uh, everyone's on the hunt for a, uh, a vaccine. <laughs> sure. And so <laughs> hopefully we'll get there in the near future. Well, uh, I think that vaccines for that or vaccine, you know, you can't manage from a bottle. You and I both know that. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> this is one that you have to uh, manage the environment with as well. And the, the dairy industry is struggling to do a better job of that. And the, I would say surely the ones that are successful in managing the disease along with these other uh, uh, treatment modalities are, are the ones that are, that are trying to manage the environments better as well. Absolutely, that's uh, important. Mineral <laughs> or nutritional components to this? Most definitely, uh, uh, trace mineral nutrition is important. Uh, yeah, nutrition has a, a, a key role in uh, making this skin have greater integrity and greater resistance to these problems, so absolutely. Wow. When we come back from the break, we'll kind of do a, you know, progression and maybe talk about some of the preventative measures that we see in, in dairies and preventing lameness, but it's just, like I say, it's an honor to have you on the show and for you to take time out, it means a lot. Uh, it's great to be here. I really appreciate it. Great. We appreciate you watching as well, and we'll come back with more with Dr. Jan Shear right after the break. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave. Straight. Simple. Sold. This is Agriculture Today from Kansas State University. Interest in growing the oilseed crop canola is rapidly rising in the Central Plains, and in partnership with seed company Monsanto, K-State is on the verge of releasing two new glyphosate-tolerant canola varieties well suited for the region. Kansas State's Mike Stom talks about their attributes. I would say uh, winter survival was probably one of the, the key traits of these varieties and they've also been very competitive in terms of yield with the current varieties that are out there. Uh, 352 also has the sulfonylurea herbicide carryover tolerance trait. That gives wheat producers that are using these long residual uh, sulfonylurea herbicides in their, their wheat production uh, to plant canola the following year. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. 
Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. We started using Multimen about four years ago. We started out first in our own cow herd and our own heifer replacement heifer program just to uh, see how it'd work, um, experiment with it. We don't like to put a new pro product out there with our clients unless we've tried it ourselves or there's a lot of data behind it that we like. Um, we had really good results with it our first year, uh, really in, uh, were happy with the way things worked. Uh, so we decided to start using our clients, and we have been now for three years, and I would say 90 to 95 percent of our clients use Multimen. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dan Cheer, who's a professor at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Iowa State University, and we're tickled to death to have him here. We're talking about dairy lameness, and, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about some of the prevention, the care, the, you know, what do we need to do to, to try to curb some of these things from happening? Uh, I think one of the most important things is um, uh, owners uh, need to have a commitment to managing foot care. They, they need to see it as, uh, as an important uh, a problem in their operations that needs to be dealt with. And that would include then making sure that uh, they have a regular um, a foot care program in place uh, that would include either an outside trimmer maybe, or it could be people that are trained on farm uh, to deal with these things. Uh, I, they need to be <clears throat> trained. All those folks need to have some training, I believe. Uh, foot care is not a simple thing to manage. There's some really complicated issues there. Um, but I think with a little training, uh, uh, we can really make a major difference in the amount of lameness that we have and certainly the impact that it's going to have on our not only our performance but also on animal welfare. So when we start talking about <laughs> foot trimming and and some of those as, as preventative or treatment, uh, you know, how often do I mean, and how do you determine which animal is is going to be trimmed? Yeah, that it really depends a lot. I have kind of learned over the years uh, there is, seems to be no one size fits all when it comes to that. It seems like in certain types of environments, uh, such as the Southwest, uh, where we have a lot of dry lot, uh, feet tend to grow a little faster, um, and have a little less wear, uh, possibly. And so um, the foot growth and wear issue becomes really critical to how much trimming may need to be done. And then, of course, the other factor is, is uh, lameness varies from farm to farm. And so um, we need to place a high priority on managing lameness disorders um, as they occur. And so uh, that needs to be the first priority and then the trimming program can kind of help prevent some of those kinds of things uh, as well as some of these other can, uh, things that we've talked about a little earlier in terms of managing these infectious skin disorders. That would be cleaner environments, cleaner dry environments, and then also um, uh, foot bathing uh, as, uh, as necessary. You bet. Well, I think it's important for, for, you know, like we'd talked during the break of creating the culture of, of on a farm or on, you know, it's not something that you can just check a box and it happens. Abs absolutely right. Uh, uh, on the operations that keep uh, lameness to a minimum, you can see a clear commitment on the part of the ownership, uh, the managers. It's just, uh, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, the culture that is created, as you say, the culture that they create uh, for having good foot care. Well, I sure appreciate the culture that you create uh, within our professional organizations and within yeah. our industries and, and uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate everything you do. Oh, thank you very much, Dan. Thanks. Thanks, folks, for joining us on Doc Talk. If you want to know more about the show or see an archived episode, you can go to us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University. You've been watching Doc Talk. We enjoyed having you with us today, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk, produced in cooperation with Drovers Cattle Network and Bovine Veterinarian.
For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection, 